Uh, good afternoon. Uh, so it's great to be here. The feel a little awkward. I got people out here. I got a screen of me looking at myself. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I got the wrong one. Do I have to hold this thing? Fantastic. That'll probably keep me good. So I'm Kevin Somerville. I work in STMD for Nikki. Um, fantastic job here working. Uh, technical Integration Manager for Extreme Environments. I work with Ben Greenhagen and Jamie Porter over in the Extreme Environments. So can you hear me? I got a little light in my mouth. Okay. Can take your mask out? Bear with me. All the technical channels. That helps. Yeah, okay, fantastic. So, um, so one of the things that we want to do, and this is a discussion, uh, trying to solicit information from you from a community-led perspective of how do we how do we establish uh, long-term sustained operations? How do we establish uh, lunar night survival capabilities? Where do we where do we need to invest now or connect the dots? Where do you want to contribute, right? Where should NASA contribute and where should NASA help you guys get together and network? Um, I started to prepare some slides, it's about 15 minutes really. It's meant to introduce a survey, um, which is where we're gonna to try to fact find or solicit information from you on, on on a follow on, the real activity is we're trying to get to a workshop or some sort of, I'm gonna call it an engagement. We bring the community together and we talk about what it means to survive the lunar night and, and what we as participants in this development, developing capability, what we contribute to it, right? How do you as a provider or a consumer der derive value from surviving lunar night, doing something long-term uh, on the lunar surface? Um, and so. You can just say next slide. Do I say next slide? Oh, magic. Uh, so I basically said most of this. We're looking for information from the community. Um, and what we really want to know is how do we best engage you so that we can understand what it is you're trying to get out of or provide to a capability that would enable lunar night survival, right? Um, so, you know. We want to understand what do you see as the key challenges? Uh, we've been studying lunar night survival for a while. And it's been a very hot topic in a number of different forms. People are talking about it and it ranges from, hey, if we've got enough power to keep us warm, we're, we're probably okay. Um, or we've got folks that are looking, really, really it's a thermal management challenge, right? Can we, can we insulate our system so that we can keep the energy in, in, internal to us? And really it's gonna, it's gonna depend on what it is you're trying to do and, and where you're trying to go and right, how your system is built and how you interact with other systems. Right. As we have other larger infrastructure, the challenges of surviving a lunar night or surviving multiple lunar nights starts to change, right? Initially, it's cold, then it becomes maybe surface charging, tribal electric effects, then it becomes things like, you know, radiation exposure or dust mitigation due to wear of parts, etc. cetera. Um, so we're really trying to understand, you know, from your perspectives, what do you see as the key challenges uh, for lunar night survival? Um, do you see where you can contribute or where you need others to contribute to what you're doing, right? So that it can be a community activity, right? Are we developing the right uh, commercial capabilities to, to go and do what you need to do? Are you providing commercial capabilities, but you don't know how to put it in the hands of the consumers, right? That's, I've talked with several small businesses recently. And while they're, they're developing uh, fantastic technologies, they're like, I don't know how to get it to this vendor, right, so that he knows how to apply the seals that I have for this particular joint technology, right? Um, so what we want to do, right, is how can how can NASA ELSIC and the community forum, right, put together a discussion and engagement, uh, you know, um, a workshop, a tech uh, a technology showcase. Not not quite sure what would actually address the challenge here. Next slide. I keep trying to click the button and it's not going. And, I'm easily trained. Well, I've been married 26 years, so. Um, so let's see, things that we would like to understand uh, from you is, you know, what are your intended applications? What are you trying to do? Uh, I think Jim showed a, a, an interesting demo we've got coming up with a hopper, right? You know, that hopper to be able to survive multiple nights, not claiming that it is or isn't, um, but if it drops off a payload, right, that being left in, in, a, in a crater or being left on some ridge somewhere, right, and it wants to make some sort of long-term measurement, that's a completely different survival scenario than, say, a large lander or a rover that's parked near some other facility or, you know, some other assets. Um, what capabilities do you need, right? What do you see as a gap to where you want to get? Or what are you developing uh, that you have a vision for as being part of what we're trying to realize? What is your timeline? 
uh, where do you where do you see yourself in the maturity scale? And where do you think you need to be if you wanted to be part of something in say 24, 25, 26, you know, depending on where you're trying to go or what part of the vision you're trying to live in? Um, what are your development and fusion challenges? How can NASA help you with those development and fusion challenges? I think we've got lots of resources, lots of opportunities. Um, what format would you like for this to be? Um, and several folks, they say, hey, I'd like to see like a showcase, you know, like a tech day on the hill or whatever. Um, what technologies do you have out there? And then I can go track them down myself. And if that's the way you want to work, how do we facilitate that? Other folks are, hey, are, are get excited when you start talking about mission scenarios. Um, hey, I want to land a lander in a crater or near a crater, build a road in and out of that crater and have sort of a, a highway that lets me go in and out on a regular basis over many years to do something. And that's a, a considerable set of infrastructure and you need to understand sort of how all those pieces play together and what are the gaps. Uh, so if, if that's something that would be exciting to you, right, in terms of a workshop and, and talking with others and networking and figuring out what you'd like to contribute to that, you know, that you'd like to understand that. Um, where do your interests align with NASA's publicly shared strategic plans, right? I think we're, we are on the cusp of releasing our updated technology gaps. Um, we are, we're, I'm constantly asked when we're gonna announce like where Artemis Space Camp is gonna be. I say, I don't know, it's not my job to release it even if I did know, um, you know, but I think more importantly, you know, well, I don't know if it's more important. Um, part of what we're doing, right, is to develop the commercial capabilities independent of what NASA is doing, right? There's a whole commercial economy we're trying to do. So where do you, where do you see yourself regardless of NASA and where do we, maybe we, maybe we can collaborate, right? Because there probably are complementary technologies out there. Um, in places where you are trying to address something that NASA has said, hey, this is important to us. Hey, we're going to do ISRU, South Pole, getting oxygen, Right. Is there something that you think that we've missed? You, you've identified in your research or technology development uh, a key piece that you think will be fundamental to our success. That, I'd like to hear about that. Um, and then how does how do we I'm constantly plugging for Elsie. It's almost like they'd be paying me. Um, how do we structure the engagements in Elsic so that we're addressing these types of discussions? You mentioned earlier, they mentioned earlier, somebody mentioned earlier, they like the site visits, sort of the, the, the closed door discussions with the Elsic. Uh, facilitators so that you can provide feedback that ultimately makes its way back to, to, to NASA. How do we how do we raise awareness of that capability? I, and all the commercial partners and academic partners that I talk with, I, I feel like I'm constantly telling them, hey, bring this up in your focus group. Um, at least with your focus group leads so that we understand how to get, how to engage you better and how do we use that community, uh, I guess, to everybody's benefit. Can I get the next slide? Let's see. Um, so here's a couple of thoughts. And one of the things I've realized when I started making these charts is why I sort of peeled it back was the, the more I added to it, the more it felt like I was leading the discussion to something that my brain has gravitated towards. Um, you know, what should this engagement look like, right? Um, Ben's mentioned, you know, a, a workshop that sort of focuses on two different aspects. You know, what are the use cases, what are the scenarios? And then uh, what, is, uh, what are the potential technologies that could address that? Uh, I've mentioned at least once already, just standing up here, you know, a potential technology showcase where we bring in vendors and we share share uh, NASA developed technologies, we, we share commercial developed and led technologies. Um, you know, should it be should it be some some conflation of that? Do you have a different idea? Is it a workshop? Is it a virtual thing? Is it a, a, a I don't know an extended study? Um, so that's going to be another portion of it. How, how would you like to engage? And participate in, I guess, in this session and in this discussion. So I think that's my last slide because I tried to keep it short because it was at the end. I think I'm good. Any questions in the room? Are well, you all going to give it a lot of thought um, and then get back to us? Lots of nodding. Lots of nodding. That's what Turkey does. Oh, yeah. Is this actually working? No. No. It is not. We're not. Yeah, so as part of our LSII work, if you have um, technologies that you would like to be able to discuss in detail, um, but you don't feel comfortable discussing them in the larger LSIC kind of monthly, then one of our roles for NASA is to be able to do site visits, either virtual or in person, 
and sometimes in person you know it's great because not only do you talk more but you get to we get to see the facilities and see what you're really um what you're really up to so that is something you can ask us for if you think a site visit, visit would be beneficial and then typically we would come out and then we write a um write a report to nasa on what we see um, we can work with you on mbas what what you're comfortable being shared and, and to whom Question. Yeah, so there was there was one question, um, but it's not it's sort of not it's a little bit orthogonal to the topic, but I will I'll post a response. 